Today's Coaching Coordinator Podcast is a segment taken from the Louisiana Football Coaches Association Clinic this past offseason. It was a star-studded clinic with coaches like Nick Saban, Eric Bieniemy, and Sean Payton. And in this particular segment, Sean Payton talks about what he calls forecasting. And the idea is that he gives some examples, just a simple situation when you can tell your players, here's what's going to happen, here's what you need to do. And you do it with confidence because there's those things that come up in the game, there's those situations where you need to be the confident person and telling them this is how it's going to happen, here's what you need to do. Reminding them of those things that you've worked on all week long. So I thought this would be a good one to share here at the end of the week. We're all going into a game week here and thinking about those things that we're going to have to do during the course of the game. Our communication to our players, how we do it matters and it can be very impactful. So here's Sean Payton talking about forecasting. So this last topic, I, I called it forecasting for, for no better term. I, I don't know if that's the correct term. Um, every one of us has done this as coaches. I guarantee you if we do this, they're not gonna have any clue of how to handle this. We throw, we do this, this is gonna, and, and when that happens in the game, it's pretty empowering. Your players look at you and they they believe, and we're in a sales business a little bit. We're, we're you know, you hear that term, man, they, they are buying in. That means they have faith and confidence in what we are teaching. And that's pretty important. And that can be, look, that gets tested for all of us. You know, we lose a couple games in a row. And, and then social media, gosh, I mean, I'm telling you, we've had games where we win a game and there's a player upset because his, his uh, fantasy points were undervalued or whatever. And, and, but the point is, though, this, this confidence that a team can begin to play with uh, can sometimes be led by, the, by us as coaches and we coach in a confident manner. We're not going to be a hundred percent right, but um, I'm, I'm going to go back to Mickey Cochran. All right. So remember Mickey was, was Bill Parcells influence. It was his basketball coach. And Bill told me a story. He said it was, it was one of his best coaching um, examples ever. Seven seconds left in a basketball game. And Bill's team, Mickey was the head coach. Bill was a player, a forward. They had the ball. So they were putting together an inbound play, seven seconds. And Parcells was a pretty good basketball player. And so this play was going to be designed to get him the ball. And they were they were on the, I don't even know what, to, they were on the their offensive end. So this was going to be an inbound. And then uh, they, they weren't going to have to travel the length of the court. They were already there. All right. And Mickey put this pick together and Bill was going to come off the pick and it was going to be dished out and the guard was going to pass it to Bill. He said, Bill, you're going to get the ball free throw line extended. All right. Free throw line extended. You're going to have the ball with about five seconds left on the clock. So we should be in good shape. And Bill said he never completed what was going to happen. In other words, he, he, he wanted Bill to know you're going to get it free throw line extended with about five seconds left on the clock. And then from there, you're going to just, your instincts are going to take over. He wasn't going, because Mickey didn't know what was going to happen after there. But he knew, he knew he could promise him that he was going to get the ball free throw line extended because he was going to come off a pick. They were going to inbound it to the guard, feed it to Bill. And there was a small version of forecasting, but broke, broke that situation down into a very simple manner for the player. Um, my second year in Dallas, I was calling the plays. Um, second or third year, might have been my third year, doesn't matter. We were in San Diego. We were opening the season with the Chargers. Breeze was the quarterback. And we're playing on the Rose, a hot, hot game in the old Jack Murphy Stadium. We're going to win this game in a close game, Cowboys, Chargers. And we got down to their four yard line, three yard line. And we were inside a minute and a half. And it was an important play, third down and three on the three. And we had called a timeout and they, they'd come over and we had the offense in the huddle and the, well, not the whole offense, but you know, 
Drew Bledsoe was the quarterback. Keyshawn Johnson was the receiver. Um, the linemen were, were still out on the field, but we we're having this discussion that, and there, it, there wasn't any argument. We were discussing, hey, this is how Keyshawn's getting played and, and Bledsoe was saying something and Bill said something. And I said, look, here's what I want to do. Keyshawn, you're going to get pressed. All right, fight for a good release and be alert for this back shoulder throw right by your ear hole. All right, Drew, find Keyshawn on this play, throw it to him. And sure enough, the same, that all happened and, and we threw the pass for a touchdown and we held, we held them on defense, we won the game. And we're in the bus waiting and, you know, the head coach is the last one to come on. And, and Bill was one of those guys that, and there's so many of you out there that, you know, as young assistants, you wanted to please your head coach. And sometimes they, he was hard to please, but, and I remember sitting on the bus and just quiet waiting to leave. And then he turned, he said, Sean, come up here. He didn't say Sean, he called me Dennis. That was my nickname because I looked like Dennis the Menace. And he said, I was always up to no good. So I got up and I sat next to him and he said, you know, you did something today that you don't even realize. And then that's when he led me to the Mickey Cochran story. So sometimes when we can forecast or we can give them a little bit of what we think is going to happen, it's amazing um, how we can clean things up sometimes for them. And then I think in the end, uh, help with their, com their confidence is, we come across these things every once in a while. You guys have seen this, I think, where people will send these to us, almost like reminding us, you got a really important job, but a coach will impact more young people in a year than the average person does in a lifetime. And so this, this is almost the, when you hear nurses talk about their profession or certain people, teachers, that, that's, that's us. You know, that's us. We're in the, the people business um, and it's much more than just our, our football and it's much more than just our scheme. Um, it's, it's all of those things. And my, my last picture I want to share with you is just an example of what I'm discussing here. All right. And I'm going to give you the picture now. The, guy, the gentleman on the right is Parcells. He's retired. He's still someone that I talk to weekly. He's like a father figure. He's sharp as a tack. He watches all the games. He watches high school football, college. And the gentleman on the left is a player by the name of Tommy Lee Lewis. And Tommy Lee was a small, was a, was a Northern Illinois free agent who ended up on our practice squad. But Bill, down in Jupiter, Florida, had worked with a group of these kids. You know, they all went to high school down in that area. And so Bill became fond of a number of these players that he'd go out and watch while they were in high school. Bill got close to the high school coaches down there. He'd go out and watch high school practice. And Tommy Lee was one of his favorites. Tommy Lee went on to Northern Illinois and then ended up signing a free agent contract. Well, he made our practice squad and then he makes our active roster. And this is the first game Tommy Lee is dressing. So he's been on our roster, but he's been inactive. And you can see his uniform behind him. He's sitting in his locker. Not only is he dressing, he's going to be our starting punt returner and kick returner at Giant Stadium on the road. And Bill happened to be there because they were honoring an old Giants team. But Bill came in, and this was, this was three hours before game time. And Bill, Bill's going through the seven – the seven must as a punt returner, you know, one by one, boom, boom, boom. But the photographer that took this picture, if, if you didn't, if you didn't say anything else, you knew how important Bill was in Tommy Lee's life. Bill's the, the one who mentors him on, on everything from spending and, and Tommy Lee has, has been a, you know, one of those player 52 or player 53s but I thought this was a great photo of someone, a proud, a proud coach in some ways who's impacted this kid's life. And here it is, he's getting to see him. And Bill's scared to death now. He, he, this is when Bill's told me, look, I recommended it, but I didn't recommend you start him. Um, but I thought it was a pretty powerful picture and uh, I think it's a good one for us to end on tonight. As you get ready for game day here and proceed into uh, the Friday Night Lights, again, remember that 
We've communicated things all week long, and game day can be very chaotic. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of things going on. But at the heart of it, you still need to be confident in your communication. So hopefully you had some great takeaways here from Coach Payton. The entire talk is available on CoachTube. I'll put the link to that in the show notes, as well as the link to all the talks from the Louisiana Football Coaches Association Clinic. Follow all we're doing at coachingcoordinator.com. And follow me on Twitter at Coach K. Krabowski.